There are seven continents in the world today, at least that we can see, but did you know that there's an eighth continent that's not part of any of the others? Welcome to Zealandia, the world's hidden continent that exists mostly under the ocean. So what is this continent, and what would it look like if it weren't submerged? To answer that question, we need to first talk about what a continent is in the first place. Ask a group of people how many continents there are, and you might get a few different answers. Seven? Six? Five? The truth is, there isn't one universally agreed upon number, and the very definition of a continent is more nuanced than you might think. Because far from being a simple count, there's a whole bunch of cultural perspectives built into it. Basically, it's not just geography and geology at play here. But at its core, a continent is a very large, continuous landmass, and geologists define them based on several key characteristics. First, their size. Continents must be noticeably larger and more immense than even very large islands. Basically, they should cover vast areas of the Earth's surface. But then there's also the distinct geology. Essentially, continents must possess a unique geologic structure, often featuring ancient core shields of rock, a variety of rock types, and a complex history of mountain building and erosion. This most often relates to crust thickness. Continental crust is significantly thicker and less dense than oceanic crust, causing it to float higher on the Earth's mantle. This is what we often hear called the continental shelf, or the area where the continental crust ends and the oceanic crust begins. Now, for our part in this video, here's where things get a little sticky, because the elevation also matters. Typically, while parts of a continent can be submerged, the bulk of it rises above sea level. Finally, and perhaps the best known delineator is that continents usually have well-defined boundaries. They are generally separated from other continents by oceans or major geologic features, although these boundaries can sometimes be debated, which we'll get to in a little bit. So, if this is all geologically determined, why then do we have different amounts of continents? The most common continental model, particularly in English-speaking countries, recognizes seven continents. Asia, Africa, North America, South America, Antarctica, Europe, and Australia. In this model, each is considered a distinct landmass. However, depending on where you're from, you may combine a couple of these. For example, there's Eurasia. Given that there's no significant body of water or even a mountain range separating them, the relatively small Ural Mountains aside, some suggest that Asia and Europe are a single continent called Eurasia. And surely from a purely geological standpoint, they are just one vast continent. And of course, there's also the Americas, which sees North America and South America as a single continent. These two are connected by the Isthmus of Panama, making them a continuous landmass similar to Eurasia. So depending on your worldview, you could end up with anywhere from five to seven continents. These variations highlight that a continent isn't just a scientific delineation. Cultural perspectives also play a significant role. For instance, the traditional separation of Europe and Asia often relates more to historic and cultural distinction than to a definitive geologic break. Similarly, the Suez Canal, a human-made waterway, is often cited as the boundary between Africa and Asia, emphasizing that some continental divisions are surprisingly recent and artificial. This fluid understanding of what constitutes a continent makes the emerging recognition of a new one all the more exciting. So what is Zelandia, the Earth's hidden eighth continent? Quick second, before we dive into the ancient history of Zealandia, allow me to introduce to you today's sponsor, Bombas. Just like discovering a hidden continent, finding true comfort in everyday essentials can be a revelation. And for me, that revelation has definitely been Bombas socks. I've got a whole drawer full of them, and for good reason. They're incredibly comfortable, but also very supportive. As someone who walks a lot, finding good supportive socks is essential. So what makes Bombas so special? It's all in the details. They're designed with things like built-in arch support and seamless toes, making them incredibly comfortable. Whether you're exploring new places like me or just relaxing at home. But Bombas is more than just comfort. It's a brand with a purpose. For every item you purchase, Bombas donates an item to a person in need. They've already donated over 150 million clothing items to people experiencing homelessness, which is just incredible. Plus, they have a 100% happiness guarantee. So if for any reason you're not absolutely thrilled with your purchase, 
they'll make it right. So feel good and do good with Bombas, knowing your purchase is doing some real good. As part of this sponsorship, new customers get 20% off their first purchase. Just go to bombas.com slash Jeff20 and use code Jeff20 at checkout. For centuries, our maps have consistently depicted seven continents. But what if there was an eighth continent, largely hidden from view and lurking beneath the Pacific Ocean? This might sound made up, but it's the actual geologic reality of Zealandia, a vast landmass that scientists have now officially recognized as the Earth's newest and arguably most elusive continent. Imagine a continent roughly two-thirds the size of Australia. Now imagine that over 94% of it is submerged under the ocean with only a few scattered islands piercing the ocean's surface. That's Zealandia. This colossal landmass lies primarily to the east of Australia, extending northwards to New Caledonia and southwards to New Zealand's South Island, which, along with the North Island, represents its most significant visible portions. Now, for decades, geologists suspected something more substantial lay beneath the Southwest Pacific. Data from seabed mapping, rock samples, and seismic surveys gradually built a compelling case. Then, in 2017, a team of geologists formally proposed Zealandia as a distinct continent, meeting almost all of the crucial criteria. But why is Zealandia considered a continent and not just a collection of islands or an underwater plateau? Well, as it turns out, it ticks all of the geologic boxes that define a traditional continental landmass, even if most of it is currently submerged. First, while it is underwater, Zealandia's seafloor is significantly shallower and rises considerably higher than the typical deep oceanic crust around it. Next, drilling and dredging operations have retrieved a wide variety of continental rocks from Zealandia's seafloor, including granite, schist, and limestone, types rarely found in the oceanic crust, but often found in continental crust. Also, Zealandia is a coherent, unified geologic unit that's readily visible from topographic mapping. Its boundaries are clearly delineated by the surrounding oceanic crust, which is much thinner and denser. But finally, and crucially, Zealandia's crust is much thicker, between 10 and 30 kilometers, than the thin, dense crust of the ocean floor, typically around 7 kilometers. This thickness is a hallmark of continental crust. But Zealandia is missing one geologic box. It's mostly submerged, but that wasn't always the case. Around 85 million years ago, Zealandia began to pull away from the supercontinent Gondwana. At this point, it was above the sea level. However, as it drifted, the forces of plate tectonics stretched and thinned its continental crust, much like pulling apart a piece of dough. This stretching caused the landmass to subside, gradually sinking below the sea level over tens of millions of years. So the recognition of Zealandia as a continent might not seem like a big deal but it does challenge our traditional views of the world's geography. And this means that New Zealand is actually far more interesting than we already knew it was. When you look at the landscapes of New Zealand, from the towering Southern Alps in the South, the volcanic mountains in the North, and the dramatic coastlines everywhere, you're not just looking at a beautiful island country. You're looking at the most prominent exposed peaks of Zealandia, the world's hidden eighth continent. These islands are the largest and highest parts of a vast, mostly submerged landmass, giving us a tangible connection to this hidden place. Geologically, New Zealand isn't merely a collection of isolated islands. It's the crinkled, uplifted spine of Zealandia, forged by the intense forces of the Australia and Pacific tectonic plates colliding. The same ancient continental crust that forms the bedrock of New Zealand continues offshore, beneath the waves, making up the bulk of Zealandia. This shared ancestry explains the distinctive geology of New Zealand, its powerful earthquakes, and its dramatic, geologically active landscape. It's also the clearest indicator of how New Zealand is geologically different from neighboring Australia, which has very little tectonic activity and even fewer mountains. But let's play a game. What if the geologic clock could rewind? or if the Earth's crust suddenly decided to lift Zealandia back above the waves. What would this lost continent look like today if most of it wasn't submerged underwater? You might assume that it would look or feel like Australia, but it would more likely be dramatically different. At roughly two-thirds the size of Australia, perhaps more comparable in area to the Indian subcontinent, Zealandia would stretch over 4,000 kilometers from north to south, an elongated continent dominating the southwest Pacific. 
Today, of course, New Zealand is just two main islands and a scattering of smaller ones. But in this scenario, New Zealand would be part of a much larger landmass. The current shallow areas of the Chatham Rise, Lord Howe Rise, and Norfolk Ridge would become vast rolling plains, perhaps with some low hills or plateaus. The submerged ridges, which today form a backbone to Zealandia, would emerge as significant mountain ranges, paralleling the existing peaks of New Zealand. And of course, there would be extensive new coastlines, creating vast new beaches, estuaries, and bays. And given its immense size and larger surface area, a resurfaced Zealandia would dramatically alter regional weather patterns in the southern hemisphere. Such a large landmass would absolutely develop its own distinct continental climate zones, moving beyond New Zealand's current maritime climate into something more akin to North America, with drier interiors, more extreme temperatures, and, perhaps, entirely new river systems flowing across its vast plains. But because it would still have mountains, it probably wouldn't come anywhere close to the Australian outback size. Instead, any dry areas would probably look more like the Patagonian steppe regions in southern Argentina. And of course, given its long geologic isolation from the other major landmasses, Zealandia, if it had remained emergent, would likely have evolved an incredibly unique array of flora and fauna. Think of New Zealand's flightless birds like the kiwi, or its ancient tuatara reptiles. These are just a glimpse of what could have evolved on a larger, more diverse continental canvas. A fully surfaced Zealandia would be a biological wonderland, a true lost world, filled with species found nowhere else on Earth, distinct even from those in Australia. But here's where things get really interesting, because had Zealandia not sunk beneath the ocean, it's very likely that humans would have settled on it far earlier than they had. The Maori people of New Zealand only arrived around the year 1200, tens of thousands of years later than Australia's Aboriginal peoples. This meant that New Zealand was pristine when the Maori and even when European colonists arrived later. But Zealandia is huge, and there's no way early Polynesian explorers would have missed it. New Caledonia, firmly within the northern region of Zealandia, was settled as early as 1100 BCE, which means that Zealandia would have looked very different from the New Zealand we know today in terms of how humans have impacted it. This also means that all of the vast mineral wealth of Zealandia, which is basically impossible to get to as of now, would likely have been extracted already. We know for a fact that large deposits of oil and natural gas exist in the region, mostly because of the Maui gas field which was discovered in the late 1960s and has been in operation ever since, though it's mostly fully extracted by now. But this gas field is located just 35 miles off Taranaki, in a relatively shallow part of the Tasman Sea. If more of Zealandia was accessible, there would probably be more natural resources that could be extracted. Today, Zealandia is obviously not above water, aside from New Zealand, New Caledonia, and a scattering of other islands. In fact, both of these places, including Australia and many of the Polynesian islands in the Pacific, are wrapped up in a global region we refer to today as Oceania. This is, in part, because Zealandia is hidden from us and we didn't even know it existed until a few years ago. But one thing is for sure here, if Zealandia did re-emerge from its Pacific depths, it would far and away be the least populated continent on the planet, with only about 5.4 million people spread across it, mostly in New Zealand. But New Zealanders shouldn't get too excited about this prospect as Zealandia likely won't ever re-emerge from the ocean. Zealandia is a fascinating part of our planet. Had things gone a little differently, who knows how it might have changed the planet. But one thing is for sure, Zealandia is a continent, just an underwater one. Hey, speaking of New Zealand, this week I'm heading all the way to the very far northern part of the country. So if you want to see what Zealandia looks like in action, go check out that video over on my travel channel. As always, I hope you enjoyed learning all about Zealandia. If you did, be sure to check out this video all about why the US grew its own borders due to the North American continental shelf. Thanks for watching. See you next time.